Do you want to do more than follow orders, think outside of the box, and manifest your dreams? Then you've come to the right show. Welcome to the award-winning podcast, Holding Down the Fort by U.S. Vet Wealth. I'm your host, Jen Amos, a gold star daughter, veteran spouse, and entrepreneur. For season seven, I am ecstatic to be in partnership with the Rosie Network to highlight motivational stories of personal growth, financial awareness, and autonomy in our military community. Now, let's get started. All right, hey everyone, welcome back. It's Thursday. And if you have been following the show in chronological order, then you'll know that Thursday is a fun way for me to bring you all into my world and get to know some people like my husband who is typically available for these interviews to co-host with me. And this week is no different. We are finishing up part two of our two-part interview with Tori Hagrenes with his Tiki Boat business, which is named VB Tiki Tours. So this conversation, like I said, is a wrap up from last week, last Thursday. So if you want to watch part one, go ahead and look up episode 166. But this is the second part of that conversation. So in this conversation, for the final part of this interview, Tori shares his business plans, such as expanding to more boats over time. He also shares his most recent success of being featured in local news and how that led to a surge in reservations. To aspiring entrepreneurs, Scott and Tori share networking tips, the importance of finding a mentor, and additional resources. Lastly, Tori turns the tables to ask Scott and Jen, that's myself and my husband, a business question. Oh my gosh, whatever could it be? You'll have to listen to find out. (laughs) Tori, thanks again for being on our show. If you want to check out his website and book your reservation, go ahead and visit the show notes of this episode in your preferred podcasting app. If you do not know how to do that, then just go ahead and open up a browser, whether it's mobile or desktop. Go ahead and search Holding on the Fort podcast.com. In the search bar, plug in the numbers 168. That's for episode 168, which is the one you're listening to right now. And you'll be able to find Tori's episode, his show notes, and especially how to get a hold of him. So last but not least, I do want to ask for your grace. If this is the first time you're listening to the show, then let me, I want to give you the heads up that my audio quality has been different. (laughs) this season compared to all past seasons. And you'll find out very quickly when you start to hear me talk. I do always want to make sure I give a shout out to my editor, Dennis, for bringing out the best in my audio quality, despite, you know, the the raw file that I had sent him. Shout out to you, Dennis. And I hope that because Scott is leading this conversation, you won't get too distracted and you will get a lot out of this conversation. So thank you. Thank you for your grace. If you want to stick around after the outro, I'll be giving a post commentary. And that being said, enjoy. You, you tell everybody, especially the military, you know, it's 2021, 42, and I got out, we're still using paper and folders and not electronic stuff. But, um, it's, you know, I got an Instagram account. I never had that before. I got another Facebook account and then LinkedIn as well from the professional aspect, but Stuff I wish I would have done three, four, five years ago, still in, definitely. And not just quite catch up now, but I need to, you know. Are you using LinkedIn yet for the business? I'm not, but that is my next step. That's on my to-do list. Yep, that is definitely on my to-do list. Because that's where I'm thinking. I mean, I think one one of the value adds of these conversations is is to recognize we're talking to military retirees or just thinking, or initially think the LinkedIn's just a place to put your resume with an extra photo and and that's where the HR people send you the the messages. But you know what you know, Tori's probably doing or are gonna be doing uh, here locally is, you know, might as well just connect with all the other business owners real quickly. Like every business owner wants to connect with new people because they're looking for new customers. So this is why I always mention the synapse, the networking groups. I was always surprised that military retirees aren't getting connected with the community members who are looking for connections. You know, realtors are, are an easy one. Realtors always want to connect with people. They always know somebody. I'm not saying to abuse the relationships, but it's, you know, everybody wants to help. And, but if they don't know where to find you, then you're just in the same box with just more military retirees. You know, we got to force ourselves out of that box a little bit. Has this business opportunity kind of 
shown that? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, absolutely. So I made a little presentation on how to start a business in Virginia Beach that I'm going to give. And one of the things I put in there, one of my bullet points is when you walk up to someone new, no one knows if you're out of uniform, no one knows that what you did in the military or how cool you might have been or how long you spent. I, I actually wrote, you're just another chucklehead walking up to them saying hi and introducing yourself. So, yeah, yeah. And you know, a lot of people, you might have been an admiral or a, a sergeant and you know, you're higher up rate, whatever. A lot of people in, in the business world, they, they respect it, but they don't necessarily care when it comes to business wide. So, some humility as well, you know. It, and just being grateful that you're you're able to do this type of thing, I guess. I'm curious to know, Tori, how have your loved ones responded to you pursuing VB Tiki Tours? Yeah, so um, my girlfriend, Elisa, absolutely loves it. She's my official but unofficial director of marketing. So she's had a blast. Love and um, her, you know, the network thing, her network is vast in this area. So she's really helped me. And my parents, Good. they just think it's cool. And my cousins are reaching out, relatives and a lot of my friends from hell want to make a trip out here and they're just embracing it. They're like, this is great. Good for you. You know, I'm, I never thought when I knew them many years ago or met them, that this would be something I'm doing. So they've been very supportive of everybody. Yeah, that's beautiful to hear because, you know, coming from your military background and making this pivot into Tiki Tours or into your boat is, I would have imagined that there had been some, I don't know, just skepticism or, or anything, but it sounds to me that, you know, your loved ones have been really supportive, which is really great to hear. Tori, we often hear about the benefits for all the veterans uh, getting into business and stuff out there. And I'm, I'm curious if you, if you tapped into those resources yet, but first I wanted your thoughts on how did having a military pension and perhaps VA disability, you know, those extra kind of even GI Bill, you know, some people leverage that to get special training for starting a business or whatever. You, you know, I, I see that as the opportunity that, you know, many military retirees forget about because, yes, it's not enough to retire on. But, you know, starting a business takes risks. And, you know, sometimes that means you're not going to have income for a while. But if you're a retiree getting a pension, you know, in your 40s still, that helps a little bit. And so, but so few recognize that as 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 a helpful tool because it's not as much as we think it's going to be, unfortunately. Yeah, Scott, that, that's a great point. I would say that lowered my risk doing this because I knew if it failed, I still had income coming in through my pension, right? I knew if I failed, the worst I had was a low high boat, basically. So would that did that help me make a decision to go into business? I would say, yes, it, it did. You know, it, it just, it's a, it was a safety bet for me, if you will. So this is why I always encourage guys, like, don't just not get a job and just try to start a business. Don't do what I did. Like <laughs> I've, 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 I don't have a pension. I didn't retire. I didn't do the full retirement, nor um, did I ever get a job and then start this on the weekend. I went all in and all self-employment can always be part-time. And so, but we get stuck with the, hey, I don't have enough time to be able to start. And then you just never get out of it. And you've you know, you've done, done the real smart thing of you started off part time and can build it from there. And now you have full control. I know people that have businesses for years and still are government contractors. It's like, I, I don't need to do more to it. It runs itself, you know. So so really, you know, having that stability, I applaud you for doing it you know, the real smart way. Yes. And one thing I gave, especially, you know, young, you know, kids just out of college, high school kids or middle age or like yourself is the risk, you know, you, you take a risk and, you know, with risk comes reward, right? But it is risky going into business. And, uh, you know, you've heard of the military, you know, people fail all the time and none of us like failing, but almost failing is kind of part of this as well. But it's, I, I have so much respect for small business entrepreneurs that I did six months ago. It's, it's great. Well, so have you had a chance to check out, you know, I mean, there's a plethora, I love using that word, of veteran resources for entrepreneurship, everything from, you know, the bunker, we, we, we work with the Rosie Network, you know, that's where we went through. We were graduates of their program. And then there's all sorts of, there's bunker labs. And then even there's groups that give loans and, and all that kind of stuff. What sort of, and, and local veterans, small business associations and that kind of stuff, you know, cause we're an online business. 
I haven't even tapped in locally as much as I'd like to or should. And so maybe maybe I need to follow up with you on this offline or we should tag team it. But, you know, what resources are you aware of and have used so far? Absolutely. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start out with uh, there is so many. You just make a full time job. Just try to find the resources to help you start a small business. You see, that's where I get paralyzed, yes, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> just- They're everywhere. What I did personally is uh, I stayed more local. So uh, the city of Virginia Beach actually has a really good small business webpage. And then that leads you to the National Score Mentor Program, if you've heard of that. That's not necessarily veteran focused, but just small business focused. And then Virginia Beach also has the Hive, which is in Town Center and is specifically for small startups to go there and learn how to run a business. They run some great workshops. I thought my lawyer that I use at a workshop. And then as far as the veterans goes, if you Google it, it's everywhere. The VA website has stuff. ODU actually has some uh, veterans webinars and seminars that I looked at. You know, even if you go to like your local VFW or Legion, there's always resources there. I know in Norfolk, they have 757 startup studios. Again, not necessarily veteran focused, but a couple of Google searches and some clicks of the mouse and you are overwhelmed at all the people that want to put the ladder down for veterans. It's a... Uh, it's a lot. Yeah, I think the 757 group it might be working with the new Bunker Labs coming that's supposed to be coming here. So we'll keep you in the loop if we hear any new info there. We went to a, a meetup a few months ago just kind of to introduce the idea here locally, right, Jen? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> Wait, what? No, for the Bunker Labs, <laughs> the, the announcement that they were just... Oh, yeah, that was months ago. It was like well, last that's what year. I just said. You're, you're talking as though it was like last week no, or something. I, I was like, well, wait, no, what? I said, I said so. months ago. Sorry, you didn't hear. I, I said months ago that, well, anyways, that they were um, uh, launching it here. So it'd be interesting to see kind of um, where that goes. But yeah, wonderful. Well, uh, yeah, well, you know, Tori, I, I feel like I, I at least asked all the questions I wanted to ask you about your journey. And I just want to commend you for what you've been able to do in such a short amount of time. And I, I especially like how, you know, you planned this out over a year ago and then you turned on your business about six weeks ago and then already you're on the news and already you're, you know, booked out, you know, seven, 70 reservations as, as you mentioned. And, um, you know, I just want to, you know, wish you continuous, you know, good fortune and, and luck and growing this business. And it sounds to me that, you really hustled in regards to networking and seeking out those resources and just doing something different, you know, for your post-military life. Like, I think, um, you know, very often Scott and I talk, like we work with military retirees quite often. And it, it, it's always special for us when we run into uh, retirees who go the path less taken. You know, obviously nothing wrong. They're, they're obviously the people have their reasons. If you want to continue taking a government job, like, you know, people have families, we completely understand that. Also, it's just that, it's just that when we do run into people like you, it, it is very refreshing. And it's inspiring for us uh, because we we are business owners ourselves. And we like knowing that, you know, coming out of the military or knowing that in the military community, there are people like you who just want to turn things around for yourself and, and have a different identity in your post-military life. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Shane. It's, it's been great. And I found a new passion outside the military and it's, it's absolutely awesome. What I think is cool is just the proof. Just say, guys, it, it's possible. Not that it wasn't, you know, hard work, but in a sense, you know, a, a year ago, you saw an opportunity, you put a little motion in action in your free time, you put yourself out there, it, which allowed you to recognize an opportunity that got you on the news. And then, and then boom, you know, quickly, you know, you're seeing success, you know, we'll see where it goes. You know, it's going to take a lot of work to, you know, you know, keep that up. Cause obviously you're eventually have to have more people to drive the boat. <laughs> to handle so many reservations. Yeah. Then you're dealing with people that of course, you know, is, is potentially, you know, an, an extra challenge, but you know, that's, that's what makes it fun. Cause then you're, you know, hoping maybe you're high in veterans and, and things get really interesting that way. So I just say, Hey, to anybody that's, you know, ever got in your back your head, well, you know, what would success look like? Like VB Tiki Tours. <laughs> like the, you know, it's possible that it doesn't have to be huge, but it can be um, life-changing in a way. And just I'm excited 
to see that, you know, it started off so well for you, man. The news thing is perfect because I'm, you know, I actually do. Do you have clips of it? I, um, I do. It's on our Facebook and our uh, on our Instagram. And I can say it to you as well. It's just like a two okay, minute cool. clip. Yeah, yeah. So for sure. Awesome. Yeah. No, that's great. I know that we've been kind of firing all these questions your way, Tori. So a- after this next question or next comment, if you have any questions for us, feel f- feel free to <laughs> ask that next because I know we've, we've been just been hyper focused on right. you here. It's interesting hearing how your business model, you have a very, the way that I would describe it is build as you go, you know, because we were asking you earlier, oh, what is the future like? What is the fall season going to look like? But like, I, I like I like that I, I like that approach of building as you go because you know in, in, in our work Scott is very futuristic minded he's always a hundred steps ahead and even once we are kind of halfway there as a team he's already like another 50 steps ahead and and the thing is like it's it is very important to have someone you know to have a visionary like Scott on our team where for me I'm very much like building blocks you know one brick at a time kind of thing but it's like how do I build these bricks if he's already trying to build another building but I think it's it's good like for us to like at least for Scott and I to be able to have that push and pull with each other I think it's what's made our business survive at this point but I think I I, I mentioned that also because I think it's good to highlight the different approaches to business, like that is the beauty of, of being self-employed, of being an entrepreneur is you can take it at your own pace. You can work as a partner like Scott and I, or you can, you know, do it on your own. Or I know in this case, you're working with your girlfriend. So I just wanted to highlight like the way that you are building out your business so far. That is a great point. Yeah. That's interesting. You see, you're kind of like build as you go, but I like that because you definitely need to have someone looking long, right? Otherwise you're going to miss something or something's going to sneak up on you that you didn't think about. And that's actually what was going to be my question for you guys. What do you guys kind of see? I know you got your second book, but what do you guys kind of see your business in a year, five, 10, or 25 years from now? Oh, man. Scott, you should answer that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not thinking that far. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, for the... I mean, for the life insurance, the financial side of it, you know, what we can be is a solution that other financial professionals use. We're a provider. Uh, We can be a third party uh, consultant and work that way, be educators and consultants, you know, unique kind of solutions. And that's common in the financial industry. It wouldn't be a program that would get hired by DOD as a contract to like take over the old program or something like that. No, we'd be more boutique in the financial industry. But what I think where we'd like to go with this is to be more of um, to teach people kind of how to do some of the the publishing and the public, you know, the video, whether it's video or writing books or whatever, like, hey, successful veteran small business doesn't have to be a veteran small business or a military spouse uh, small business. But the ones that do have success that start, you know, hitting whatever success means to them, sometimes that means, you know, millions of dollars or whatever. Um, but eventually they want to tell their story or they need to tell their story to be able to market themselves better. And there's a lot that goes into it. And there's a mindset part of it. There's in some regards, um, you know, there's financial part of it. there's even health part of it in some cases when people um, want to put themselves out there. So, you know, just learning to do that. I've been playing around with it for 10, 15 years. And so I always thought, you know, that's why I'd like to give financial advice because the highest paid people in any business or any industry are those who are the most well known. So it's like, well, you don't have to become famous anymore. You just have to be sort of well known for the people who want to be the most useful. For Tori, he'd be the most well known guy in in wherever wherever somebody's within driving distance of a tiki boat, then you know, be known amongst those people. Like I'm trying to be known amongst military retirees currently. But I think at some point, you know, that might expand into other areas. You know, we're kind of open to that. We just want to be, you know, following our passions as well, which, you know, tends to be this, you know, learning how to do, you know, communication and teaching online and, and in written form to some extent. Absolutely. No, that's awesome. But it's, you know, make it up as we go because everything's changing. Next thing we know, AI is just going to make videos and everything for us. And then I don't know what we're supposed to do at that point. Right. <laughs> I want to add to what Scott is saying. You know, my vision, and we talked about this recently, like my vision for our business is, you know, just like how realtors have a market for military families and VA loans, we want to be able to franchise our our messaging for other financial advisors who want to serve the military community because 
actually, this is part of the reason why Scott started our business to begin with is because traditional financial advisors typically work in the civilian world and don't necessarily tailor their services to our military service members. And so we have that niche and we have that messaging and we have the content. And, you know, as we continue to build, it's my hope that we create some kind of franchise model or, or even like a packet of sorts to be able to give the financial advisors who want to speak about the importance of privatizing your pension or, you know, really making a confident and informed decision about the survivor benefit plan. You know, we think that's in- incredibly important. And I know that we've talked we've talked to financial advisors in the past who said, oh, wow, that's a great idea. Like, you know, how can we refer business your way? And I think for us, it's like continuously having that dialogue on how do we systematize that or how do we communicate with them on how they can communicate our messaging to our clients. So I would say that that's part of the long the long term goal, because, you know, for Scott and I, as much as we enjoy being on video and being on the microphone, we also want to live our lives and we also want to you know, share the opportunity with other people who want to be in this space, because I think that is really the success of a business is it is if it grows beyond you. So so that's my answer for you, Tori. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> awesome, Jen. Yeah. Thinking long and thinking big. I love it. That's great. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Well, I think this was a great conversation. I mean, Tori, if you don't have any other questions for us, like I feel pretty good. But yeah, any any final things you want to ask us or or just anything else you want to share about your journey that you want to impart to, you know, our career military families and, and military retirees? Yeah, I will I will say one thing I haven't said yet is uh, the importance of a good mentor. Someone mm. who's done this before, someone you trust, and uh, someone who you can bounce ideas off of, someone you can ask questions, someone who will keep your thoughts private if you need to, um, and someone who's been there, done that. I've had three people that have really helped me teach me what a business is. I mean, they've sat down with me for an hour every other week. And here's how you run financials. Here's how you, your board of governors should work. Here's how you do whatever. If I didn't have that, I would be floundering and with my hands and probably drowning out my tiki boat at this point. So find a mentor as you go through this process, someone who's been there. That's really helped me too. And I didn't, I didn't say that earlier, but mentorship is huge. Is that how you use score or did you also find just someone locally or... Score does give you the mentor. Mine was mine was okay. We didn't. Um, we just met once and never really followed up. But they do have mentors uh, on the business world. But I just found some old friends or commanding officers I've trusted who are in business. Okay. And wow, I, it's it's great. But there are other other um, generic mentor programs out there, if you will. So. You know, and honestly, that's that's a big part of networking that people forget about is network to find the mentor. Uh, you know. I even struggle with that, you know, to forget. I'll, I'll tell, I, I told Mike yeah, Wallace. I was going to say, I second that. Like, oddly yeah. enough, like, I think it's because you and I work together that we we kind of turn to each other. But, you know, you're right, Tori. I, for a while, I can't say that I have a mentor. And it's funny because I have, you know, friends who are aspiring entrepreneurs and they, they kind of want me to mentor them. But I feel like, but I feel a little like uneasy about it because it's like, well, should I charge for my time for this or something? And so I think I think because of that thought process, it's hard for me to like want to get a mentor that's just like willing to give like in that kind of information because it, it's out of the kindness and goodwill of their heart. So I don't know. I'm going to put it out there in, in the world. And if anyone wants to mentor Scott and I, one, good luck. And two, we'll be happy to entertain it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> No, I appreciate you sharing that because that no, that is a great point. And again, good for you for you know finding you know that the right help quickly to get you off the ground, you know, moving smoothly. So no, I'm just real proud of you, man, and happy to have met met you. And you, I, I don't know if you ever linked up with the you know, synapse that we've talked about. It's like you don't even need it. Like, you got you got yeah. all the connections already. You can just host your host all the meetups on your thing. So. No, just just real real cool that you're a successful, you know, local business, and you know we're, we're yeah. happy to get to know you. Absolutely, thank you, but you great people to to know personally and professionally, and uh, and again, you know, the your book style really that that couple pages I read did inspire me to to take a risk on my own. So I'm um, glad I read that. And I would recommend that as well. So <laughs> thanks, Ben. Cool. All right. Well, Tori, it was such a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you so much. And uh, Scott, thank you for co-hosting with me. Appreciate it. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Awesome. And with that said, thank you so much for our listeners for joining us today. We hope you got a lot of value out of this conversation. Just stay tuned for the outro for information on how to get a hold of Tori. And until then, we'll chat with you in the next episode. Tune in next time. (laughs) 
Hey, this is your host, Jen Amos. Thanks again for listening to today's episode of Holding Down the Fort by U.S. Vet Wealth. Visit holdingdownthefortpodcast.com to access the full show notes of this episode, including resources mentioned and bonus content. Once again, that's holdingdownthefortpodcast.com. Lastly, stay after this outro music for something a little extra. Thanks again and chat soon. Bye for now. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for sticking around after the outro to hear my post commentary. If you enjoyed these so far or you want to hear more of what I have to share or you have any questions for me, you can always create a free account on our podcast portal. All you have to do is go to holdingdownthefortpodcast.com forward slash portal. When you go on there, you'll get free access to all the bonus content, my commentary, tips on podcasting, my journey as an entrepreneur, all available in that portal. You will also get free financial education from my company, US Vet Wealth. And this is especially great for our military retirees or transitioning career military families who are looking to just get a wider lens on what their financial options are, not just their government benefits, but also in the private market. And so if that's something you're looking to do, you want to make sure you make a confident and informed decision about your financial future. We provide all these amazing free resources for you right in our portal. So once again, website is holdingonthefortpodcast.com forward slash portal. Love to see you there. All right. So the main thing I just want to mention today is, you know, just how fun it's been to talk to everyone this season. It's been incredibly fun. And the whole process of getting the show together, the post-production and, you know, continuing to work through my audio quality or just embracing it this season. It, It is what it is. What it is is another phrase I like to live by when things just are how they are, how they are. And rather than take it personally, rather than grieve about it, I mean, I do grieve about it, but rather than like let it stifle me I often like to say well it is what it is what it is and I just take this as information and move forward with that new information so if anyone's ever looking for a business tip or a life hack tip to keep you from dwelling on anything the mantra I go by is well it is what it is what it is and you take that situation as new information and adjust your plans accordingly that's all you can do because dwelling just stalls, I think. You know, anyway, that's a whole life lesson we could talk about later. But for now, I just want to share that. And lately, the theme I hear from a lot of our guests is this topic of networking. And you, you were able to hear a little bit of it from Tori in this conversation today. And I wanted to just take a stab at what I think networking is. I think networking really is just relationship building. It's just, you know, think about the way that you stay in touch with your friends, your family, In a similar way, you can do that with your professional connections. And I want to share this now, this one book that I really like. If you're ever looking for tips on how to follow up with people, I need to look it up real quick, though. So give me a second, because I think the lady that I used to follow, she like changed the name. Let's see. Oh, it's still here. You can get the paperback if you want it. Okay, so this book has been a game changer for me. I got this book so, so, so many years ago. In fact, the paperback version was published in 2011, according to Amazon. So this is an old book. And till this day, it's something I still refer to people if they're looking for ways to follow up. And I do think that following up or a way to reframe it is to check in with people. Because I think checking in with people on occasion is just such a great way to network. Networking doesn't always have to mean like sitting down for coffee or having a long phone conversation or Zoom call. It could just be like little check-ins. And so this book that I highly recommend for anyone that struggles with networking or struggles with relationship building or follow-up, check out this book. It's a very simple read. And I feel like it's more of like an action-oriented book than anything. So I really like that. It's called Follow-Up Savvy. Implement the Savvy System to Strengthen Your Relationships and Increase Your Business. This is by Wanda Allen. The main author is Wanda Allen, but it also was written by Jennifer Swan Myers. But the main person is Wanda Allen. I actually had met her in person forever ago. Again, this book came out in 2011, so it was some time ago. And 
I just remember that book really, really stuck with me. And it's something I would still recommend to people today who are looking for ways to network. And a part of networking is following up. So that is the tip I'll share with you all today for free on the show. If you're looking for more free stuff, free advice, free tips, especially about entrepreneurship or podcasting or just life, <laughs> and you have any questions for me, again, join us on our free podcast portal. You just have to go to holding on the forwards podcast.com forward slash portal. And you can contact me directly. Our online portal is one of the few social media apps I actually have my notifications on for. I don't have any social media apps on my phone. So another fun fact for you, I typically only log into social media on my desktop. And I usually just log on for business reasons for business related activities. And I'm better for it. It's better for my mental health. So another tip, I'm just dropping all these tips today. (laughs) So anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you got a lot out of today's conversation. And shout out again to Matt Wood for being a guest on the show. And thank you all for your grace for my audio quality. As you can hear here, this is what it should be sounding like. (laughs) So anyway, thanks so much for listening. And I hope to chat with you the next episode. Tune in next time. 